My name is Dennis Simsek, but I also go by the name The Anxiety Guy. And if you're like most people in the Western world, there have been times when you have felt overwhelmed by the commitments and responsibilities of modern day life. Perhaps you have felt like there's never enough time in the day to get everything done. You collapse into bed completely spent and find yourself asking what is the point of it all. That is why you are here and I'm going to give you all the answers you need in order to live a stress-free life starting today. So let's get started right away. Introduction For several decades now, researchers all over the world have asserted that what goes in the mind affects the body. Negative thoughts and a negative attitude lead to our feeling low. Our heads fall, our shoulders sag, and our breathing becomes very, very shallow. In fact, it has been conclusively proven that a negative mind can trigger off a whole chain of physiobiological reactions which are designed to make us feel this way. On the other hand, positive thoughts and positive attitudes makes us feel good. Our heads are held up, we tend to look up, stand taller, breathe deeper, and fuller. So you see, the body is directly affected by our mental state. But consider this. Recent research reveals that the body also has the capability of affecting the mind. The way you carry yourself, the way you walk, the way you talk, and the way you project your physical self affects your attitude and mind to a fairly large extent. If you always stand straight with your chest held out and breathe deeply, chances are that you will be projecting a positive outlook. On the other hand, if your shoulders are dropped and you have a crouched back, you are probably passing through a rather dull phase. An interesting and potentially very powerful corollary of this is that we can control our emotions through our bodily actions and postures. Hence, if we want to feel good or positive, all we have to do is change our body posture. Though it may vary only slightly from person to person, the overall constituents of a positive frame of mind are more or less the same. Head high, shoulders pulled back, deep breathing, chest held out, and of course the all-important smile. As Anthony Robbins put it, motions create emotions. The way we move changes the way we think, feel, and behave. The slightest movement of a facial muscle to a rigorous workout can affect our emotions. Even the simple act of smiling can make an enormous difference to your state. Extensive research in this area proves that the act of smiling sets off a biological reaction that affects all parts of the body. It stimulates the heart and the lungs. It increases the flow of blood and oxygens to the brain. The body's organs functions more smoothly, clearing the body of harmful toxins. Imagine such a simple act having such far-reaching consequences. In fact, many doctors are of the opinion that 50 minutes of lighter laughter on a daily basis can increase your lifespan by about 5 to 10 years. The point is that nothing happens by chance. We have all been created in a very scientific manner. Every gesture, every moment in the body has some purpose. Some cause us to feel miserable, doubt our abilities, or curse our luck while others make us feel good, optimistic, and positive about our life. We have got to choose the ones we desire. Nowadays, stress is considered as one of the main factors of poor mental and physical health of people. And this is not surprising. Our present environment has an overabundance of stressors, such as problems at home, pressures at work, financial difficulties, hectic schedules, unhealthy lifestyle and living conditions, and excessive demands of society to conform to standards or meet expectations. Let me say that again for you. Stress is caused by the way people respond to the external and internal environment. People react to them in different ways. 
What may be stressful to some may be challenges or merely inconveniences to others. Psychologists have identified a pattern in the way people react to excessive stress or the fight or flight response. This accounts for the display of either hostility or passivity from persons who are not adapting well to their environment. They may also experience sleep disturbances and headaches, nervousness, anxiety, and changes in eating habits. The changes in behaviors and the physical symptoms result in more stressful situations. Problems may erupt at work, at home, or at schools, and thus relationships with others are strained. To help people cope with stress and prevent stress-induced problems from scaling into full-blown medical problems, stress management is gaining a significant following among psychologists and other medical practitioners. Stress management programs such as this encompass a multitude of techniques designed to equip people with coping mechanisms to deal effectively with stressors. This can be reduced to the concept of mind over matter, although a healthy dose of physical health is thrown into the mix. The psychological makeup of people largely determines how they react to things. The fact is that people create the stress themselves by their inability to react appropriately. For example, most people have a low level of tolerance to criticisms, but they display reactions to them in different ways. Some will be defensive and take them personally, maybe even lose sleep over them. Others are more reflective, taking time to analyze whether there might actually be some merit to the criticisms. People who are most prone to stress are those who have a tenuous hold on their emotions, who see the environment in the negative light, who have less confidence in themselves, or those who can't think clearly because of unhealthy lifestyles. Partying till the wee hours of the morning, then reporting to work, becomes a stressful situation when job deadlines are held up. Even the actual stress sets in only when the offenders see the situation as something they cannot cope with. Stress management techniques are varied enough to offer specific cures for specific stress problems. Stress-induced depression probably will require a program that is designed and administered by an experienced psychologist, life coach, or psychotherapist, but other symptoms may require equally simple solutions. Stress emanating from strained office relationships can be eliminated by conflict resolution sessions among co-employees to iron out irritants. Exercise and meditation are good stress management techniques that can be carried out at your own timing. Meditation helps to focus the mind on spiritual things and thus provides inner strength in facing difficulties while exercise helps maintain a healthy body which contributes to healthy minds as you probably already know. What is your stress level? Everyone responds to stress in different ways. Some of the changes in one person's life can be the leading cause of one suffering from stress. There is an interactive tool that measures one's stress level according to the number of changes one has recently had. This score will give a rough estimate of one's current stress level. You will also be able to find out if you are out to experience other health related problems due to one experienced stress in the next 12 to 18 months. This has been known to help individuals suffering from stress to better prepare oneself in handling future outbreaks of stress. If you experience short term or acute stress, you find yourself being awakened during the night and finding yourself very irritable and quite edgy. One suffering from high levels of stress for longer periods of time may find that they are more prone to having or developing serious health problems. 
high blood pressure is often related to stress. A low immune system can be brought on by stress and cause your body not to be able to fight off infections or other diseases. Once you encounter stress, you are bound to encounter depression, asthma, or even heart disease. When the interactive tool is used in measuring one stress level, one may find that they could be experiencing low, mild, moderate, or high stress levels. An individual suffering from moderate or high stress levels are more prone to encountering other stress-related illnesses. This interactive tool is only an estimate of one stress level. Often the way an individual handles stress depends on several important factors. One's resiliency to cope with change is significant in changing one's lifestyle. This individual needs all the support and love they can get from their family and friends. If you find that your stress level is high or moderate, one may want to consider trying to avoid situations that may cause an increasing amount of stress in your life. It is important to learn how to handle the stress that you may already be suffering from. It never hurts to lend an open ear or a helping hand to an individual that is suffering from stress. Often, the one suffering from stress finds comfort when they can share their innermost thoughts with another person. Help your loved ones to enjoy a healthier lifestyle by helping them to eliminate stress in their lives. Stress is the wear and tear our bodies experience as we adjust to our continually changing environment. It has physical and emotional effects on us and can create positive or negative feelings. As a positive influence, stress can help compel us to take action. It can result in a new awareness and an exciting new perspective. As a negative influence, it can result in feelings of distrust, rejection, anger, and depression, which in turn can lead to health problems such as headaches, upset stomach, rashes, insomnia, ulcers, high blood pressure, heart disease, and even stroke. In prehistoric times, the physical changes in response to stress were an essential adaptation for meeting natural threats. Even in the modern world, the stress response can be an asset for raising levels of performance during critical events such as a sporting activity, an important meeting, or in a situation or actual danger or crisis. If stress becomes persistent and low level, however, all parts of the body stress apparatus, the brain, heart, lungs, vessels, and muscles become chronically over or under activated. This may produce physical or psychological damage over some time. Acute stress can be harmful in certain situations. Stress-related conditions that are most likely to produce negative physical effects include 1. An accumulation of persistent stressful situations, particularly those that a person cannot easily control. 2. Persistent stress following a severe acute response to a traumatic event, such as an automobile accident. Number three, an inefficient or insufficient relaxation response. Number four, acute stress in people with serious illness such as heart disease. The physical symptoms of anxiety and stress can be quite detrimental to one's health. Unfortunately, Many people may be so stressed that they do not realize the extent of it or the impact that stress and anxiety is having on their health. In some cases, the more stress or anxiety an individual experiences, the less able they are to recognize it. Quite frequently in these situations, the individual may have even become so accustomed to their level of stress and the physical symptoms it produces that they feel that it is normal. This was me for a very, very long time. Due to the fact that some people may not be aware of their emotional responses to stress 
and anxiety, they may need to rely on physical manifestations to identify it. This makes taking the time to learn about the physical symptoms of stress and anxiety an important step. Tuning into the symptoms of stress and anxiety can help you to identify potential triggers in your life and in turn help you to better manage them and alleviate the stress and anxiety in your life. It is important to be aware that the physical symptoms of anxiety and stress can vary from one person to the next. Some symptoms may be more serious than others and can even be life-threatening. It should be noted that one symptom on its own may not necessarily indicate the presence of stress and anxiety. However, where there are multiple symptoms, this is a strong indication there is stress or anxiety present. Some symptoms you experience may be short-term, while others may be long-term symptoms. Short-term symptoms include the following. Cold hands and feet, dry mouth, rapid breathing, increased heartbeat, increased sweating, nausea, diarrhea. Generally, these short-term side effects appear when the body is responding to a perceived threat. This is the body's way of helping you prepare to either stay and fight the threatening situation or flee from it a response commonly known as fight or flight. While this rush of adrenaline and emotions can be helpful in a truly threatening situation, it can have negative impacts during times when there is no immediate danger. Over time, these physical symptoms can damage your self-confidence, disrupt the quality of your life, and reduce the pleasure you get from your work. In addition, when the body is exposed to these physical symptoms over a long period of time, your health can actually start to decline. Long-term side effects of stress and anxiety include sexual disorders, changes in appetite, insomnia, frequent illness, back pain, asthma, headaches, digestive problems, lethargy, restlessness, depression, irritability. Remember that one symptom by itself may not necessarily indicate the presence of either short-term or long-term stress and anxiety. There are other reasons that can result in a single symptom, such as certain medications. The presence of multiple symptoms, however, can indicate a problem. If you notice multiple physical symptoms of anxiety and stress, take heart in knowing that stress and anxiety management techniques can help you to reduce those symptoms and get back to your old self. Much of what we teach in the End the Anxiety program deals with this exactly and is a great option for you if you feel like your stress has progressed into more of an anxiety disorder. The Positive Side of Stress Life by general consensus is a complicated affair that can be tackled in as many ways as there are people. It is possible to cruise by life without worrying too much, blatantly ignoring aspects and factors that can cause abrupt changes in one's life. On the other extreme, it is also possible to experience such levels of stress and anxiety that one is unable to find security only in certain areas of personal comfort. For others, life gets to them and they simply lose touch with reality itself. Yet, all of the approaches that people have come up with to cope, life tends to be rooted firmly in stress for these people. The fact is, Stress is a prevalent and natural component of life. Even during simpler, more idyllic times, there was always a certain level of pressure that people had to deal with. The triggers that cause states of extreme duress differ from person to person, mainly because people have different levels of tolerance for stress. Some may find a certain level of pressure to be absolutely intolerable 
while others would be able to get through it relatively unscathed. Perspective and perception in this particular case appears to be the key factor in determining how much stress a person can handle. However, regardless of how one views the pressures that modern life piles up on a person, it still has to be dealt with somehow. Complete avoidance of it is not the answer. Abandoning duty and ignoring things that cause stress would inevitably be a bad move. Stress in smaller and more controlled amounts can be used as a personal signal. It can act as a reminder that something needs to be done and certain situations need immediate attention. This can help someone in assessing their immediate and long-term priorities. So long as the cause of the problem is approached properly and the person doesn't let the problem blow itself out of proper context, then a bit of pressure is not necessarily a negative thing. However, Allowing the pressures of life to get to you is just as bad as simply ignoring them altogether. The human mind, while clearly a fine example of finely tuned machinery, has limitations. Having too many things to do and not having enough time to do them can sometimes be as an example of poor time management. But for some people, having too little time means exactly that. Taking in too many tasks and attempting to multitask beyond one's mental ability to coordinate can lead to rapid burnout for some people and irreparable insanity in others. It is people and situations like these that give stress the entirely negative reputation that it has with people taking the whole thing entirely out of proportion. In the end, stress is very similar to fear. Both are taken by modern society and culture in a highly negative light, but both are components of the human psyche that are as integral to being human as love and happiness. Both can effectively cripple someone and prevent them from living but only if the person allows that to happen. Both of the above need not to be feared, so long as the person is capable of recognizing that moderate amounts can be used in a positive manner. Stress and fear, in and out of themselves, are not positive, but like anger, can be used to point someone in the right direction. The stress response of the body is somewhat like an airplane readying for takeoff. Virtually all systems, example, the heart and blood vessels, the immune system, the lungs, the digestive system, the sensory organs, and brain are all modified to meet the perceived danger. Great job so far. We'll see you in the next chapter, which is Trembling, Pounding Heart. Trembling, Pounding Heart With trembling and a pounding heart, we can find it difficult to execute precise controlled skills, and the intensity of our focus on survival interferes with our ability to make fine judgments based on drawing information from many sources. We find ourselves more accident-prone and less able to make good decisions, Become aware of your stressors and your emotional and physical reactions. Notice your distress. Don't ignore it. Don't gloss over your problems. Determine what events distress you. What are you telling yourself about the meaning of these events? Determine how your body responds to the stress. Do you become nervous or physically upset? If so, in what specific ways? Preventing stress. Reduce the intensity of your emotional reaction to stress. The stress reaction is triggered by your perception of the danger, physical danger and or emotional danger. Are you viewing your stressors in exaggerated terms and or taking a difficult situation and making it a complete disaster? Are you expecting to please everyone? 
Are you overreacting and viewing things as absolutely critical and urgent? Do you feel you must always prevail in every situation? Work at adopting more moderate views. Try to see the stress as something that you can cope with rather than something that overpowers you. Try to temper your excess emotions. Put the situation in real good perspective. Do not labor on the negative aspects and the what ifs. Overeating, stress, and the modern world. The mere fact that the term comfort food exists is proof enough that eating certain foods is good for relieving stress. Whether it's something connected to mental health and memories or an evolutionary instinct, the fact is that eating is effective stress relief. However, when one considers all the stress and anxiety that gets tossed around in modern society, it isn't surprising to learn that the weight loss pill market is on a steady increase. Indeed, as people are put under more and more stress, with less and less time to find stress relief from it, food becomes an increasingly tempting option. Sure, stress and anxiety are not the only factors behind the increasing number of people with obesity, but it does have to take some of the flack. People look to food as a cost-effective means of stress relief, mainly because a number of modern environments simply don't allow for a significant amount of time to relax. For example, in those high-stress corporate environments, people tend to have very little time to spare between getting to work, actually working, and their duties outside of work. To avoid allowing the stress to build and become a danger to them or the people around them, they do the one stress relief activity that they can do. A little candy bar here or some potato chips there can be enough to get a person's mind through the stress and anxiety of a typical workday. However, when one develops a dependence on these things to relieve stress, there is going to be an eventual need for a weight loss pill or a diet plan. We simply don't want to go in that direction. It isn't just the corporate workplace and the employees within it that end up eating a little too much comfort food. For instance, mothers also have to deal with the problem of relying on comfort foods. Between the stress of having to keep a handle on active children and the duties that mothers have to perform, there is plenty of room for the average mother to binge a little. This can be especially true in suburban environments where there is often a subtle competition between housewives that put a lot of undue stress and anxiety on mother and child alike. Children can also sometimes fall victim to overeating comfort foods. With so much pressure on children to succeed on all possible levels, there's plenty of stress and anxiety to go around. The problem lies in the fact that children nowadays are subjected by their parents to all manner of time-consuming extracurricular activities with even the slightest potential becoming something that could be developed. Parents tend to be well-meaning in cutting down on the playing time of their children as all of these activities are designed to help them succeed. However, there comes a time when children will need to be given time to be children. Stress and anxiety are things that the mental health of a child is not fully capable of handling, such that any form of stress relief can be seen as acceptable. For most, succumbing to peer pressure or playing video games can do the trick but a few others end up turning into binge eaters. Overeating due to stress and anxiety is not an encompassing problem yet, but statistics show that it is getting there. As competition in the workplace, stress in the home, and the pressure to succeed compounds with each generation, more and more people are going to need effective, quick stress relief. Press for time to find ample ways to relax, food can often be the only viable option available to them. Whenever we get too busy or stressed, 
we all tend to make poor food choices that will actually increase stress and cause other problems. To get the most of your healthy eating and avoid stress, follow these simple tips. Number one, always eat breakfast. Even though you may think you aren't hungry, you need to eat something. Skipping breakfast makes it harder to maintain the proper blood and sugar levels during the day, so you should always eat something. Number two, carry a snack. Keeping some protein rich snacks in your car, office, or pocketbook will help you avoid blood sugar level dips, the accompanying mood swings, and the fatigue. Trail mix, granola bars, and energy bars all have the nutrients that you need. Number three, healthy munchies. If you like to munch when you're stressed out, you can replace chips or other non-healthy foods with carrot sticks, celery sticks, seaweed, or even sunflower seeds. Number four, bring your lunch. Although a lot of people prefer to eat fast food for lunch, you can save a lot of money and actually eat healthier if you take a few minutes and pack a lunch at home. Even if you only do this a few times a week, you'll see an improvement over eating out. Number five, stock your home. As important as it is to get the bad food out of your house, it's even more important to get the good food in. The best way to do this is to plan a menu of healthy meals and snacks at the beginning of the week. List the ingredients you need, then go shop for them. This way, you'll know what you want when you need it, and you won't have to stress over what to eat. Stress can stop your weight loss goals about as much as eating a family-sized bag of nacho chips and a 2-liter bottle of pop cans. I had no idea that our body used food in a very specific manner and that we can improve our energy levels by working with the body, not against it. There were some very specific rules to follow, so being the good student I followed them. It became a religion for me and as I preached it, it made many people quite crazy. I became an outcast because I had to prepare my food differently and would not eat with the gang at meals. My food was prepared differently, eaten differently, and eventually I even came to ask food servers to use different spatulas to flip my veggie burger from the grill. I followed the rules and I increased my energy. I began eating better and my energy levels increased enough that my weight loss began and I started to become lean and healthy right during the time I was touring as a tennis professional. Great job. See you in the next chapter. Is stress keeping you up at night? What keeps North Americans awake at night? While for some it may have been too much pizza, for most business people today, especially entrepreneurs, managers, and executives, it's stress. There's just too much to do, and not enough time to do it. The result of the hyped up business climate we live in today is a population that's dependent on medication and drugs just to sleep and get through the day. These only serve to increase the devastating effects of stress on our lives. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that 60% to 70% of all disease and illness is stress-related. Add to the fact that an estimated 75% to 90% of visits to physicians are stress-related, and there's good reason the drug companies are having a complete field day. This really isn't necessary. There is way too much good information and knowledge about stress and stress reduction to get all stressed out about stress. These are the top eight stress busters that I teach my clients individually. These will improve the quality of your sleep and dramatically reduce your stress and anxiety levels. So let's get to them. Number one, 
Mindful awareness of thoughts and beliefs. Become aware of what you are thinking and feeling during the day. Are your thoughts negative, fearful, or limiting? Do you worry about everything? Money, health, and relationships? If you are thinking negative thoughts, you are attracting into your life negative people and unhelpful situations. You are doing the very thing you do not want to do. Try to let go of the thought and replace it with a positive belief or image. Number two, visualization. Clinical evidence shows that physical changes clearly happen when people practice imagery regularly. Creating a mental image in your mind is a very powerful practice to use in the morning when you get up and at night before you go to sleep. Start by relaxing with music or in silence and create an image of a peaceful place. Then envision your mind what you want to happen. Say, I am totally relaxed. I will wake up with the solution to my problem. I will sleep soundly at night. If you practice these techniques frequently, you can instill these messages into your subconscious mind and activate the relaxation response any time you want. Number three, meditation. Meditating before bedtime for 10 to 20 minutes can be very helpful for reducing stress and promoting sounder sleep. Sit quietly in a comfortable chair, close your eyes, and breathe deeply. Focus on your breath. Relax your chest and body. When your mind wanders and you find yourself lost in other thoughts, let the emotions or thoughts go and return your focus to your breathing. This practice works quickly to reduce stress and rebalances your body. Continue this for at least 10 minutes or until you feel drowsy. Number four, exercise, exercise, exercise. It's a great way to release tension and fortify ourselves against the physical effects of stress. Engage in aerobic activity. Take a walk, run or swim. Try a new fun exercise such as NIA, belly dancing, or boxing. Exercising in the evening, however, can be counterproductive, particularly if the exercise is too vigorous. More on this later. Number five, laughter and fun. Laughter is one of the healthiest antidotes to stress. Take yourself lightly and your work seriously. When we laugh or even smile, blood flow to the brain is increased, endorphins are released, and levels of stress hormones drop. Start to notice how often you smile. People who experience joy, fun, and laughter sleep very, very well. Number six, diaphragmatic breathing. The following exercise makes use of breathing and can enhance the ability to fall asleep due to its calming effect. Now, put one hand on your abdomen and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose and expel it slowly and completely through your mouth. You will feel your belly flatten. Exhale fully, drawing in your abdomen. At the end of each third exhalation, hold your breath for as long as you can. Then repeat the process two or three times or until you feel sleepy. Number seven, take action. Instead of reliving the situation over and over and having sleepless nights, take some action to move the issue forward. Talk to a friend. Get an anxiety coach. Journal. Just do something. Procrastination weakens productivity compounds your anxiety, and causes the stressful side effects of guilt, anger, and low self-esteem. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about hypnotherapy, so let's get right to it. Hypnotherapy Do you ever get the feeling that you just can't think straight any longer, especially before getting to bed? 
that your ability to concentrate has just disappeared, that your brain has somehow reached overload and that your thought processes have ground to a halt. You are tired and irritable. Perhaps your neck feels stiff and your shoulders and muscles are tight and you have headaches. Does all this seem familiar to you? Imagine having relief on tap, something you could experience whenever you need it, something that would remove all the stress from your body and return the sparkle to your mind. How would you feel if you could wake up tomorrow feeling in total control? Well, happily, you are blessed with a really powerful tool that can remove stress instantly, your body's relaxation response. Using hypnosis such as the ones that are in this audio program, you can trigger this wonderful natural effect and it will release hormones and neurotransmitters that flood your body and mind with pure cleansing relaxation. You owe it to yourself to feel the relief you can have instantly. Stress causes many physical and psychological problems that can be relieved through hypnotherapy. Hypnosis changes the way you think and moves you forward into a new perspective. Most people feel better immediately and stop their self-defeating thought processes. When you discover how easy it is to resolve the issues with hypnotherapy, you will be amazed. Some people say it feels like magic because it is so easy to make powerful changes. Hypnotherapy simply allows you to access the resources you already have in your subconscious mind. It moves your mind and body into a different state where your emotions and hormonal balance will help you feel better. This will enable your subconscious mind to access new, more relaxed, more uplifting emotions. You will enjoy deep, peaceful relaxation, allowing the feelings of tension and stress to just drift away from you. You will be left feeling recharged and energized. A hypnosis session won't just help you to chill out. It could be the single most important thing that forever determines your ability to feel relaxed and calm, even under the most stressful of situations. Learn to recognize the signs that stress is starting to build up and be prepared to act quickly on the problems causing this, because problems seem to grow in intensity if they are not dealt with. The relief will be instant, and you will be glad that you did. It's important to realize that you always have choices and learning how to properly manage stress will make you a happier person and really will improve your life. Believe in yourself and in the power of your mind. Your 5-Minute Daily Strategy to Better Stress Management We all have a favorite expression when it comes to being stressed out. And I wouldn't bother naming all of them since it may also vary in different languages. But when it comes down to it, I think that it is how we work or even relax for that matter that triggers stress. Ever been stressed even when you're well relaxed and bored? I know I have. It is important to find ways to decrease and prevent stressful incidents and decrease negative reactions to stress. Here are some of the things that can be done by just remembering it, since life is basically a routine to follow like brushing your teeth or eating breakfast. You can do a few of them in a longer span of time, but as they say, every minute counts. Managing time. Time management skills can allow you more time with your family and friends and possibly increase your performance and productivity. This will help reduce your stress. Now to improve your time management, make sure you do these things. Number one, save time by focusing and concentrating, delegating and scheduling time for yourself. Number two, keep a record of how you spend your time, including work, family and leisure time. Number three, Prioritize your time by rating tasks by importance and urgency. Redirect your time to those activities that are important and meaningful to you. Number four, 
Manage your commitments by not over or under committing. Don't commit to what is not important to you. Number five, deal with procrastination by using a day planner, breaking large projects into smaller ones, and setting short term deadlines. Number six, examine your beliefs to reduce conflict between what you believe and what your life is like. Build healthy coping strategies. It is important that you identify your coping strategies. One way to do this is by recording the stressful event, your reaction, and how you cope in a stress journal. With this information, you can work to change unhealthy coping strategies into healthy ones, those that help you focus on the positive and what you can change or control in your life. Lifestyle Some behaviors and lifestyle choices affect your stress levels. They may not cause stress directly, but they can interfere with the ways your body seeks relief from stress. Try to balance personal, work, and family needs and obligations. Have a sense of purpose in your life. Get enough sleep since your body recovers from the stresses of the day while you are sleeping. Eat a balanced diet for nutritional defense against stress. Get moderate exercise throughout the week. Limit your consumption of alcohol. Don't smoke. Social support. Social support is a major factor in how we experience stress. Social support is the positive support you receive from family, friends, and the community. It is the knowledge that you are cared for, loved, esteemed, and valued. More and more research indicates a strong relationship between social support and better mental and physical health. Changing thinking. Now, when an event triggers negative thoughts for you, you may experience fear, insecurity, anxiety, depression, rage, guilt, and a sense of worthlessness or powerlessness. These emotions trigger the body's stress, just as an actual threat does. Dealing with your negative thoughts and how you see things can help reduce your stress. Try these. Number one. Thought stopping helps you stop a negative thought to help eliminate stress. Number two, disproving irrational thoughts helps you to avoid exaggerating the negative thought, anticipating the worst, and interpreting an event incorrectly. Number three, problem solving helps you identify all aspects of a stressful event and find ways to deal with it. Number four, changing your communication style helps you communicate in a way that makes your views known without making others feel put down, hostile, or intimidated. This reduces the stress that comes from poor communication. Even writers like me can get stressed, even though we are just using our hands or do the talking. But having to sit for seven or eight hours is already stressful enough and we have our own way to relieve stress. Whether you're the male guy, the CEO, or the average working parent, stress is one unwanted visitor you would love to boot out of your home and your life. And that is what this program will do once you start to follow it. The Daily Grind You know, stress at most jobs is pretty much unavoidable. It could be caused by a boss who is very demanding, or a co-worker who doesn't pull his or her weight. Or maybe you have a typically stressful position, such as in medicine or law. While some stress on the job can drive you to succeed and be healthy, too much can be very bad, as you probably already know. It can cause many health problems and be detrimental. Because of this, it is important that you learn effective stress management techniques for the job. While many stress-inducing factors 
may be out of your control, like dealing with your boss, there are ways to cope that could save your life. The average number of hours of work has gone up 8% in one generation, to about 47 hours a week. One out of every five Americans work as much as 49 hours a week. This can be a great source of stress, not just at work, but at home too. A high rate of divorces is credited each year to long hours at work. It is important to realistically assess the hours you work each week. Can you cut back and still get the job done? Can you delegate your tasks to other coworkers? Can you develop a more flexible schedule? If you consider these options, your job-related stress can diminish significantly. Overworking can cause many health problems. You might become sick more often, which will force you to call in sick at work. Work absenteeism is costing American companies a lot of money, which makes workplace less productive. Americans also feel a great deal of stress because they no longer feel secure in their jobs. Layoffs and company bankruptcies have exploded in recent years, with very little job security. Employees live in constant fear that they will not have a job the next day. And because of this, people worry about their retirement funds. It is because of these factors that employees now have little loyalty to their employers, causing stress for all parties involved. Because the workplace climate has changed, it is important that our own outlooks change as well. Employees need to try to reduce their stress even though they might not feel secure in their jobs. That might mean opening a separate retirement fund and making regular contributions toward retirement. If you work on being proactive, chances are your stress levels will decrease. If you suffer stress from the tedium of boring, repetitive, and meaningless work, then it's time you changed your attitude, simply by seeing work as adventure, service, ritual, self-expression, and meaningful. You can transform the very nature of the daily grind. Many people might laugh at you if you suggested that a humdrum job could become an adventure. But here are three ways you can turn every day of working life into one of surprise and discovery. Make it a challenge in which you create your own targets. I'm going to be the best cocktail maker in town. I want to complete the dishwashing in the fastest time. Make it learning in which you develop your curiosity about the job, how things are made and work as well as trying out new skills to see if the job can't be done in a better way. Make it a game in which you create interest and fun by injecting a new twist into the job, such as the bartender who took to compiling lists of barstool bores. When work is seen as an adventure with new things to explore and learn, you'll look forward to Monday mornings with a newfound spirit of wonder. Let's look at work as a service. Much of the stress we experience in the workplace originates from an excessive preoccupation with ourselves and others with whom we work with. Some of the particularly strained relationships we can experience arise out of internal politicking, departmental rivalries, poor or mismanaged relationships, game playing, bad supervision and management of people. Now, while these situations are not solved overnight, we can make major changes in how we see them and how we feel when we shift our perceptions from an internal to an external focus, from ourselves to others, from those we work with to those we work for. Then work ceases to be about us and our survival and becomes an act of service instead. Let's look at work as a ritual. When we see work as ritual, no matter how mundane it may be, it is lifted into something more meaningful. 
We do it not for the rewards, but for its own sake. It is like the Zen Buddhist monk who sweeps the snow from the monastery steps even while it is snowing, simply because it is snowing. When we see work as a ritual, it becomes absorbing. When we see work as a ritual, the minutest details are as valuable as the grandest gestures. When we see work as a ritual, we connect with it, become part of it, are joined in the rhythm of it. When we see work as ritual, we develop a natural pace and flow and go with it as in a dance. Remember, the best work is done without strain, as if we had no goal in mind. What about work as a self-expression? When we perform routine work, we have the choice whether to see it as a chore and a means to an end or to turn it into something special. When work is made special, it becomes an art form, a way of putting on theater, a form of self-expression. This can apply to the way we make a slab of pizza dough, to the way we stack supermarket shelves, to the way we take care of the school hall. No matter how repetitive and routine, each act can have our own distinctive stamp on it. Joseph Conrad had a really good quote, and I want to share that with you here. I don't like work. No man does. But I like what is in work. The chance to find yourself, your own reality, for yourself, not for others, what no other man can ever know. Let's look into meaningful work. Much of the stress of routine work comes from not knowing or seeing the results of our efforts. Warren Bennis is a professor of management at the University of South California in San Diego, a particularly parched part of the state. Every day when he goes into work, he notices the beautifully kept lawns and flower beds and wonders. Does anyone ever thank the gardeners for lifting our spirits? When we know what our work does for others, whether routine or creative, we get a glimpse of our significance in the better scheme of things. Marilyn Ferguson says that we can transform the stress and boredom of our daily work by changing our attitude. New attitudes change the very experience of daily work. Work becomes a ritual, a game, a discipline, an adventure, learning, even an art as our perceptions change. The stress of tedium and the stress of the unknown, the two causes of work-related sufferings, are transformed. A more fluent quality of attention allows us to move through tasks that once seemed repetitious or distasteful. We see that meaning can be discovered and expressed in any human service, whether that's cleaning, teaching, gardening, carpentry, selling, caring for children, or even driving a taxi. When your career becomes way too stressful. What do you do when the career you have chosen stresses you out? When this happens, it is easy to get depressed since your career is very important. As a result, here are some suggestions on how to deal with your career anxieties. Determine why your career makes you stressed out. Maybe it's some aspect of your career that makes you anxious, or maybe you need a new job. Do some soul searching and determine the main causes of your career anxieties. Once you know why you are so stressed, Develop a plan of action. Maybe it's not your career that is stressful, but instead your job that is the problem. If it is your job that makes you anxious, then try to find ways to improve the situation. If this doesn't work, then change jobs. Sometimes it may be the career itself that is the problem. Do not be afraid to change careers if you have to. People nowadays change careers for various reasons. Many adults go back to school to get the necessary training for their new career. 
The important thing is to determine which career best suits you. Remember that you have options. There are all kinds of jobs and careers out there, so do not feel that your back is in the corner. If you do not know what to do, then take a career skills assessment test, which will determine what kind of job or career best suits your particular interests and skill sets. There are many career coaches that can give you additional advice. Your local college has career counselors that can give you assistance and provide you with information on a variety of careers. It is really important to find a job or career that makes you feel good about yourself. Do not just take a job because the money is good or because it will impress your friends. You are the one who has to go to work every day. So find something that you like to do and that will also pay the bills. It will take some work, but eventually you will find something that you love. Top 10 Best Ways to Deal with Stress at Work Now, women are more prone to workplace stress because of the many roles that they play in life. As a career woman, wife, mother, daughter, and friend, women work way beyond the 9 to 5 shift often having to rush home to cook dinner, help the kids with homework, and prepare the next day's office attire for the hubby. The stress and anxiety caused by endless tasks and impossible deadlines in a high-speed, high-tech world has made women's lives a living web of complexity. The question is, how can women cope with stress and anxiety? The first step is to dissect the problem and understand how these psychological and emotional conditions make women's lives more difficult. Now these suggestions are primarily based for women, but you guys out there can absolutely use any one of these techniques in order to get rid of your workplace stress. So here we go. Stress is a combination of fatigue, restlessness, depression, over-focusing, and overall gloominess that is a consequence of overwork and other domestic or personal problems. The difficulty of trying to balance time between work and the home has caused many people to suffer from stress. Personal or relationship issues like divorce or separation have also been the cause of induced panic attacks. People who own and manage their own businesses are also prone to stress. The high drive for business success cannot always protect them from times of depression and overwork. Career people, on the other hand, have to confront office politics, gender discrimination, sexual harassment, and the fear of being laid off. But there's still hope for the overworked, stressed out people out there. Here are some practical ways for you to reduce and manage work-related stress. Number one, put up relaxing scenes. It could be a poster or a small painting with beautiful scenery. You can even download screensavers of beaches, waterfalls, clear lakes, and other scenes that help you create a serene mood at work. Number two, the to-do list. Use post-its or other stick-on notepads. Color code your notes and even put up an alarm in your computer to remind you of priority tasks. The key is know what to do first. Number three, time out. As they say, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Take some time to go out to take a breather. Get away from reading emails that are mostly junk. Do stimulating activities like Sudoku or Brain Teaser. Reading some inspirational books like The Chicken Soup for the Soul will definitely help you. Number four, rearrange your workstation. Add some homey additions to your workstation. Put up photos of your family or your favorite pet. Whenever you feel stressed out, just glance at their happy faces or cuteness and you'll find yourself smiling back. Number five, when a plant isn't just a plant. 
Having a plant around your workplace is good stress relief. Studies show that looking at something green, like a plant, helps soothe your eyes after facing the computer monitor all day or after reading for a long time. Focusing on a green plant will have a soothing effect. Number six, exercise. Walking, climbing the stairs, or going out to run helps fight stress. Physical activity helps get rid of tension. During a workout, your body releases endorphins, which help your body to relax. Endorphins also act as a natural painkiller. There are a lot of exercise videos that you can use ranging from the standard aerobics to Pilates, Taibo, and a host of other fitness programs out there. Number 7. Declutter. A cluttered workstation like having pens, pencils, notepads, tons of paper spread out every inch of your workplace adds to your stress. Make your work environment more appealing by organizing your things and throwing away things you no longer need. Number 8. Set boundaries. Communicate and assert yourself. Make your coworkers know when you are more available for chit chat. Number 9. Lessen your caffeine intake. Caffeine is popularly known as a stimulant. Too much of it adds to stress and even leads to depression. Number 10. Eat a good breakfast. Just as we talked about earlier, do not skip meals, even if you are indeed in a hurry. Studies show that if you make it a practice to eat breakfast every day, your body gets more of the needed proteins to give you an energy boost to face the working day. Beat work-related stress without beating yourself up. Learn how to relax. Sure, we have duties and responsibilities, but if you don't learn to relax, burnout is what you get. Make an effort to relax. Listen to good music. Try not to smoke, because if you don't watch out, the results could be hypertension, depression, and a plethora of other ailments that can sidetrack your career and your home life. It's time to regain a sense of balance if you want to stay alive for a long, long, long time. Mental Stress and Body Image Issues Having the perfect body has become a very serious issue for many people in the world today. While some say that it is usual for women to be body conscious or potentially develop an eating disorder, various studies suggest that men develop this condition by seeing men with muscular and toned physiques being shown in the television, internet, and magazines. Because of these factors, the male community developed the desire to achieve the same physique that these celebrities possess. Body dysphoria is used by many medical experts to describe feelings of sadness, depression, and self-hate as a result of one's appearance. This condition now affects countless individuals from around the world. Individuals with dysphoria tend to overtrain, not minding the effects that may take place in the long run. Oftentimes, these people see themselves as being thin and scrawny. Their goal to become more muscular becomes more intense and will do everything to achieve their wanted physique. They are in a hurry to achieve their ideal physique that they have disregarded the effects that overtraining may bring. Overtraining can cause physical and mental illness because the excessive intensity of training does not give the athlete or individual enough time to rest and recover. This incident is common in weightlifters, runners, and other athletes. Studies show that about 10 to 20 percent of athletes overtrain. The mental stress that is encountered by people may also impair the body's immune function. Expectations of coaches, family members, and other people can contribute to a drop in performance and the increase of acquiring infections. Injuries and the actual stress of competition may also aggravate psychological stress.
diminished immune systems encountered by athletes resembles those that are experienced by people who undergo hypertension and sleep deprivation. In recent studies, highly stressed individuals had high incidences of respiratory ailments over a period of six months compared to unstressed individuals. Aside from an impaired immune system, men who overtrain may also experience a temporary reduction in sperm count and quality, which may lead to temporary infertility. This happens because the body literally kills itself during training and needs time to recuperate to build muscles and improve the body. Too much or too intense physical activity may reduce the level of hormones in the bloodstream and adversely affect sperm production. Sperm quality and production may return to normal after three days. But aside from overtraining, individuals who have body dysphoria also show signs of depression, decreased level of performance at work or school due to low concentration and social withdrawal. In addition, body dysphoric people may feel that they do not measure up to the standards that are portrayed in the television, magazines, and the internet. They may find some parts of their body to be something to be ashamed of. Some signs and symptoms of body dysphoria may include the following. Excessively, frequently checking of one's body or appearance in the mirror. Constantly flexing the muscles in efforts to gauge progress levels. Consuming vast amounts of food in an attempt to get larger. Avoidance of going out because of the belief that they do not look good enough. Wearing large, baggy clothing to hide one's appearance. Spending an overabundance of hours in the gym trying to bulk up. Not taking compliments well. And finally, talking negatively about your own appearance. In closing, individuals who suffer from body dysphoria and other psychological disorders should talk to a life coach to talk about their condition. These people should also abstain from magazines, television programs, internet sites, and other forms of media that promote feelings of measuring up what one sees. If this condition is treated in early stages, it might be much easier to overcome. Exercising the right way in order to overcome your stress. Even though exercise may not be the most exciting word in your vocabulary right now, it sure is a word with a lot of benefits. Participating in daily exercise will not only make you healthier in general, but it can also diminish the effects of stress on your body as well. Think about all the times you have heard someone say, the doctor says it's stress related. Normally, people will laugh it off. Concluding that doctors say that when they don't know the real answers or diagnosis. Now the truth of the matter is that too much stress will play a role in many diseases. To help increase your immune system and decrease your stress levels as well, try exercise, as movement is the key word here. Bending, stretching, reaching, walking. There's really no need to buy any expensive equipment either, as you can implement more movement into your daily routine and reap the benefits. If you like aerobic exercise, you should grab a partner and have a blast with them on one of the basic aerobic videos on YouTube, or you can simply go out for a walk and enjoy spending time together. As you may have heard, walking really is the best overall exercise you can do for your stress levels. As long as you have a pair of walking shoes, you are fine. As you go through your daily activities, make it a point to walk a little further, bend down and pick something up without using a pickup stick or moving the item towards you with your foot. While you are sitting, you should also do some simple quick stretches for your neck and your shoulders. If you enjoy sitting around watching television, you should consider buying a jogging board. 
These padded boards will make running, jumping, or walking in place less stressful on your knees and joints. They are easy to store as well and also very portable. In many people's opinions, jogging boards are the best pieces of equipment you can buy. They are also far cheaper than bulky treadmills and stationary bikes. There are several different exercises that you can do to help eliminate the stress in your life. Walking is by far the best, as you can easily lose yourself and your troubles by walking. Even if it is just around the block, walking can do wonders for your health as well as your stress. If you have a lot of stress in your life, you may want to consider a gym. Working out, then sitting in the sauna is also a good way to relieve tension. If your gym has a pool, you may find swimming to be very beneficial as well, as it helps you to relax completely. The number one sport for stress. For many people, playing golf is a way to work off the stress of everyday living. For others, however, it's the source of their greatest frustration. The game of golf can be a lot of fun, or it can be the most infuriating game known to humans. No two golf games are alike, no matter how good or bad the players may be. One reason for this is that the weather conditions on the day you will play will never be identical, and weather has a large role in the game of golf. While some die-hard fans will be on the course rain or shine, others will never play during thunderstorms. These people are probably smarter than the others. Wind is one feature of the weather that has an enormous impact on your game because it affects the way the ball travels. Golf balls spin when they are hit, and the spin can be enhanced by the wind. This may cause the ball to drift away from its target. Golfers must account for the wind when they take their shots. Now, why am I telling you all this? because golf is an excellent form of exercise if you walk the course. You'll be walking an equivalent of about 4 miles during an 18-hole game, since a good course is about 2 miles around. Doctors often recommend walking to keep the heart and lungs healthy. Walking is a great stress reliever, and golf is by far the best stress-relieving sport there is out there and I highly recommend that you begin taking it up. Playing a game of golf gives you good reason to get out of the house and spend some time outdoors enjoying the beauties of nature. Most courses are well landscaped and located in nice areas. You can also watch the wildlife that lives around a golf course. That includes squirrels and rabbits. The proximity to nature helps you forget about the mistakes you made on your last shot. It calms you down so you can prepare for the next shot. Some golfers find that playing the game is one of the best stress relievers they've ever found. On the golf course, you can really hit something and not get in trouble for it. You are actually rewarded for hitting the ball as hard as you can sometimes. It's a perfect way to get rid of your stress. There is also quite a bit of honor associated with the game. While this may be surprising to some people, it is a fact that golf is the only game in which a person calls a penalty on himself or herself. Those who play the game with honor never hesitate to do so when it is required. There are dishonorable players who claim to be good at the game, but who would never call a penalty, regardless of how much they deserved it. The scores of these players are meaningless, however. And this kind of behavior is likely to be evident in other parts of their daily lives. So what can golf teach you? Golf can teach you to become more conscious of your outer world and less conscious of your inner world. The more attention you put onto your outer world in the form of playing golf, the more relaxed, the more stress-free you're going to feel. Now let's get into the herbs against stress. The most important herbs that will help you against your stress. 
Medicinal herbs play an important role in curing people from various ailments, including stress. Stress is supposed to be a major force in repudiating the will of a person. Stress is a major backdrop which limits the functioning of any person. A person might be successful, but may not be able to make decisions just because he may be under stress. History is also full of studies of herbs. For instance, in China, nearly three quarters of the world are dependent on herbs. Herbs act as a stimulator for healing various ailments. Stress is caused by several reasons in one's life. No particular reason can be given to the rise of stress in one's life. The reasons which can be blamed for the rise of stress are the changes or break in relationships, family problems, job changes, endless errands, and most probably insecurity and on the whole being alone. Stress causes headaches, sleeplessness, impotence, diarrhea, and increased or loss of appetite. Stress even leads to anxiety disorders and panic situations. If you feel like you have an anxiety disorder, check out the End the Anxiety program. This can all be eliminated by the use of medicinal herbs. Herbs can be used in various ways, such as infusion used in making tea, decoction used in form of barks, extracts from creams, and compress clothes soaked in water based on herbal prep. Stress forms a major factor in preventing a person's will to move and stops a person from investing their entire mind on a particular work. There are various medicinal herbs which will help you to remove stress. These herbs include Agnus castus, also known as Chastaberry, the main action being a hormone regulator. The main therapeutic use is to stop an irregular menstrual cycle. Black cohosh helps to have a clear menstrual flow and remove stress. Echinacea is used as an immune booster and also as a remover of nervous exhaustion. Medicinal herbs provide ample relief from stress and also work as a regulator or healer. Medicinal herbs provide relief from various phobias which are also indicators for stress. The herbs act as a stress manager and relief from obsessive compulsive disorders which include repetitive thoughts, intense impulses, and a combination of absurd and unusual thoughts. The medicinal herbs I mentioned can be used as a multivitamin and also a mineral complex. Medicinal herbs are being plucked up and then sorted out. The roots and the leaves have different purposes. The roots are kept in water while the leaves are washed out and ground. The roots are pressed and an ample amount of juice is taken out from it. The mixing process takes place in companies and they undergo processing and then they are packed up. Medicinal herbs give extended value and act as a catalyst where it does not change but alters the conditions and provides a regulating force. Medicinal herbs are enriched with source values and with amazing potential so as to remove various ailments, but at times medicine leads to side effects. They contain poor quality of containments of only smaller kinds. Herbs have also been treated as an ancient form of medicine to treat illness. Even herbs such as hawthorn, made from flowers and berries, are used in treating heart diseases. Also garlic, which acts as prevention against bacteria and fungal colds. Medicinal herbs on the whole act as a regulator and remover of stress and works amazingly on the nervous system. So just to review some of the herbs that you can begin taking right now for your stress, let's go over a couple of them. Agnus castus, black cohosh, echinacea, garlic, hawthorn, and St. John's wort are all fantastic herbs that you can begin using today in order to eliminate your stress.
When used consistently and in conjunction with this program, you're going to find that your stress levels decrease a lot in the next coming weeks. I want to completely recommend that you become your own naturopath. What is that? It has been around for more than a century. It is effective and it is a handy way to relieve stress and its related ailments. Becoming a naturopath as such is not a single entity, but it is comprised of color therapy, aromatherapy, and flower essence therapy. Remedial treatments using colors. Color therapy. Since color is considered to have some specific emotional influence on the mind and behavior of individuals, it is also staying as one of the components of becoming a naturopath to cure stress-induced physical and psychological disorders. Each and every color shows its own effect on your emotions, and they are specific in nature. For example, number one, yellow will provoke your intellect. Number two, blue will give you a soothing effect and calm down your nerves. Number three, red will provoke your thought process. These colors are being used by many anxiety coaches out there to bring the desired balance in the mind-body structure and that will in turn react chemically in the healing process. Recently, these therapists have started using color with acupuncture, called color puncture, to treat emotional and energy-related ailments, which restores the stressed-out mind-body to its earlier primitive state. Remedial treatment using fragrance. Aromatherapy. Fragrance plays a vital role in stress-related problems. When the therapeutic power of essential oils from lavender flower was found, the concept of aromatherapy came into existence during the last decade. At present, nearly about 50 varieties of essential oils that are extracted from flowers and plants are being used in curing health disorders, mainly for those induced by stress. It is necessary to take into consideration your heart conditions, physical conditions, and your overall support systems when you are recommended to undergo aromatherapy as I am doing for you now. This treatment will first reduce the stress effects in you and give you a feeling of well-being which will help to set the motion for the healing process. The combined therapy of massage and acupressure along with therapy is an established fact that the effectiveness of the therapy is high and will help to release your emotional stress and reduce your physical and mental stress. Remedial treatment using the essence of flowers. Flower therapy. The treatment with the essence of flowers is done with the aim to bring you closer to your soul by doing it at the soul level, where you can find or experience peace falling on you and relieving your stress. This therapy helps you to take a back seat from the negative qualities of your soul, like hate, fear, negativeness, and bring out the noble qualities like love, humility, courage, positive approach, and equanimity of body and mind. Since stress and stress-related disorders couldn't coincide and exist with the noble qualities of the soul in the same globe, the stress and the stress-induced ailments make a rapid departure and eventually leave you completely. I hope you begin using these three types of therapies. If you have any questions, make sure to email them to me at endtheanxiety at gmail.com. The Power of Siberian Ginseng Now, I separated Siberian ginseng from the other herbs I mentioned earlier because of the power it brings behind it. Everybody that I have recommended this for that I am coaching currently have all made remarkable changes in their stress levels simply by using Siberian ginseng daily. Today, many people use Siberian ginseng to increase endurance and resistance to stress. Results indicated that after four weeks of 300 milligrams of Siberian ginseng per day, 
it had a positive impact on stress, fatigue, and vitality, but results were not sustained after eight weeks. Preliminary studies also suggest that Siberian ginseng promotes immune functions. Driving away stress. It's the morning rush hour and your blood has reached the boiling point. You have exactly five minutes to get to work and you discover a major traffic tie up along the freeway. You see the orange pylons and suddenly realize that you are stuck in a construction zone. The stress of being late for work seems overwhelming. Or perhaps it's 5.30 p.m. and you're rushing to pick up your four-year-old from daycare. A car suddenly veers in front of you and you have to slam on the brakes. You barely avoid an accident. Again, your stress level is rising and you're finding it difficult to cope. In today's world, driving is a major cause of stress. Many of us spend countless hours stuck in traffic jams. There seems to be more and more cars on the road than ever before. In many Canadian and American cities, traffic problems are a major public safety issue, and at times it might seem as if drivers are less courteous than they've ever been. Another source of stress is the care and maintenance of your vehicle. You have to worry about paying insurance costs, inspection fees, rising gas prices, and basic maintenance bills. The financial stress involved in keeping a car on the road can seem tremendous. Also, you might be saddled with a car that has constant breakdowns. If you feel as if your car is not secure, it can be quite a stressful experience. For parents, chauffeuring children can be quite a stressful time as well. You might have to referee fights between children as you drive, or you might have to find innovative ways to keep children occupied during long commutes. Keeping children well fed in the car can also be quite stressful. In desperation, you might pull into a drive through where the wait seems intolerable. Driving stress sure is a fact of modern life. There will always be potholes discourteous drivers, cranky passengers, you will inevitably encounter traffic jams on your way to work, to the store, or to the school. There will always be times when you grip the wheel, wondering whether you'll be able to make it. While you cannot eliminate stress of the road, there are ways to curtail it. For instance, you might consider investing in some restful CDs. Classical music can be quite soothing on a difficult driving day. Or you might like to listen to a CD of nature sounds as you try negotiating your way through traffic. You'll find that you're better able to handle the stress of driving with some pleasant sounds emanating from your car stereo. Another thing you might consider is changing your route. If you inevitably end up in traffic jams on the freeway, Consider using residential streets instead. While you might find that your commute time is longer, you might also discover that your stress is reduced considerably when your route is changed. Another powerful technique that many drivers use is to start out 5 to 10 minutes earlier than they need to. That way, you don't have to operate under such a time crunch. Those 5 or 10 minutes can make quite a difference to your daily commute. In addition, you might enjoy having those extra minutes to yourself once you arrive at school or at work. Driving is a necessary daily chore for most of us. The trick is to make it as enjoyable as possible in order to lessen our stress levels. Investing in a comfortable seat cushion or a relaxing backrest can do wonders for your frame of mind. Singing or whistling in the car can be another effective stress reducer. Playing games with your children, such as trying to spot out a state license plate, can be yet another effective stress reducing technique. Chances are you will not be able to reduce your stress levels overnight. Many of us have become quite used to stress on the road. However, by trying to make our trips as pleasant as possible, 
we can go a long way to lessening driving induced stress. The secrets to making your travel stress free and easy for you. The greatest secret to the success of vacation is in the planning. While it sounds daring to just throw your clothes in a bag and wing it, the reality is that it takes a calculator, a pencil, and even a map to plot an easy and stress-free vacation. Number one, make a realistic budget and stick to it. You don't want to spend sleepless nights worrying how to pay off your credit card. How much can you afford to spend? Then list down what you will have to pay for, from obvious expenses like room, board, and transportation, to things like food, airport fees, and souvenirs, and shopping. To get a realistic gauge, find out the cost of living in the area and visit travelers' forums to get a real good general idea of how much others have spent. Also consider hidden costs and the nature of the vacation. For example, a hotel may look cheap, but it may have such a limited range of accessible restaurants that you'll end up spending a fortune on food. Or, you may be visiting a shopper's haven when the bargains are too great to pass up. You need more money to splurge here than if you had just gone to a beach where the sun is completely free. Number two, keep a realistic itinerary. Some people turn vacations into a frenzied attempt to see everything in three days or less. The thing is, if you try to cram too many sites, you'll be running from one place to another without really absorbing what you hear and see. You may also be exhausting yourself to the point that you need a vacation to recover from your vacation. Research on the places you want to visit. How much time do you really need for each? Some places are just beautiful backdrops where you'll need less than an hour to take the requisite photos. Others, like museums, should have an entire afternoon. Number three, start planning three to four months ahead. This gives you time to look for discounts or negotiate for better rates and make arrangements for the work you're leaving behind. You also have time to save in case you realize your allotted budget isn't enough. Number four, Find out about the place's quirks. Be informed. Know the climate, the kind of clothes you need to wear, and prepare for the little quirks of the place. For example, you may find out that it costs a fortune to develop films or photos in the resorts you're visiting. At least you'll have an extra memory card. Other things to look out for are accessibility of transportation. How many people in that area can speak English? The number of ATMs or how many of the establishment accept credit cards? These details may not seem as important as finding a good hotel, but can quickly become annoying and stressful inconveniences. Number five, don't go there with too many expectations. It's okay to be excited, but many tourists are just too easily disappointed and frustrated. Remember, no matter how imperfect a vacation is, it's still a chance to discover a new place and culture, and get out of the rut of the everyday. It's useless to keep comparing it to how things are back home, or rant about how it's fallen short of the promises in the brochure. You are already there, so make the most of it. As we get towards the end of this audio program, I want to let you know that this chapter coming up is probably one of the most important overall chapters of this audio program. So I really want you to keep that in mind as we go through this. Make sure that you're taking notes. Make sure that you're applying all the stuff that you're learning on a daily basis. Here we go. Your 7-Day Program to Stress Management They say there's more than one way to skin a cat. The same goes when you start tearing your hair out with all the frustration, grief, anxiety, and yes, of course, stress. It's a state of mental conditioning 
that is like taking that bitter pill down your throat, causing you to lose your sense of self, and worse, your sanity. Just thinking about it can drive anyone off the edge. And they say that the proactive ones are already living off the edge. As one former stressed out person to another, I know how it feels. And believe me, there are many variants when it comes to stress. Coping with life and carrying the problems that may or may not belong to you can scratch away the little joys and happiness that you can carry once you head out that door. You can't blame them for being like that. They have their own reasons. So much like we have our own reasons to allow stress to weigh us down, they say that stress is all in the mind. Well, what's bugging you anyway? There are several ways to manage stress and eventually remove it out of your life once and for all. So I'll try to divide it into a seven day course for you and I promise it's not going to be too taxing on the body as well as on the mind. Number one, acknowledge that your stress is good. Make stress your best friend. Based on the body's natural fight or flight response, that burst of energy will enhance your performance at the right moment. I've yet to see a top sportsman totally relax before a big competition. Use stress wisely to push yourself that little bit harder when it counts most. Number two, avoid stress sneezers. Stressed people sneeze stress germs indiscriminately and before you know it, you are infected too. Protect yourself by recognizing stress in others and limiting your contact with them. Or if you got the inclination, play stress doctor and teach them how to better manage themselves as you are learning through this audio program. Number three, learn from the best. When people around are losing their head, who keeps calm? What are they doing differently? What is their attitude? What language do they use? Are they trained and experienced? Figure it out from afar or sit them down for a chat. Learn from the best stress managers and copy what they do. Number four, practice socially acceptable heavy breathing. This is something I've learned from a gym instructor. You can trick your body into relaxing by using heavy breathing. Breathe in slowly for a count of 7, then breathe out for a count of 11. Repeat the 7-11 breathing until your heart rate slows down, your sweaty palms dry off, and things start to feel more normal. Number 5. Give stressful thoughts the red light. It is possible to tangle yourself up in a stress knot all by yourself. If this happens, then that might happen and then we're all up the creek. Most of these things never happen, so why waste all that energy worrying needlessly? Give stress thought trains the red light and stop them in their tracks. Okay, so it might go wrong. How likely is that? And what can you do to prevent it? Number six, know your trigger points and hotspots. Presentations, interviews, meetings, giving difficult feedback, tight deadlines. Honestly, my heart rate is cranking up just by telling you these. Make your own list of stress trigger points or hotspots and make sure to be specific. Is it only presentations to a certain audience that you get worked up over? Does one project cause more stress than another? Are you drinking too much coffee? Knowing what causes you stress is powerful information, as you can take action to make it less stressful. Do you need to learn some new skills? Do you need extra resources? Do you need to switch to decaf? Number seven, burn the candle at one end. Lack of sleep, poor diet, and no exercise wreaks havoc on your body and your mind. Kind of obvious but worth mentioning as it's often gone ignored as stress management techniques. Listen to your mother and don't burn the candle at both ends. So having stress can be a total drag, but that should not hinder us from finding that inner peace of mind 
that we have wanted for such a long time. In any case, one could always go to the Bahamas and bask under the summer sun. Conclusion to this audio program. So in conclusion, how can stress be controlled and completely eliminated? Stress can be eliminated through two methods, physically or mentally. Well, appropriate methods brought to you by this audio program will have to be applied at the appropriate time to eliminate stress. But you must use these methods consistently and on a permanent basis to become successful. The goal is to act fast and not let stress become chronic and lead to full-blown anxiety. If you feel that your stress and anxiety have gotten past the manageable stage and you're fighting sensations of anxiety on a daily basis, then check out the End the Anxiety program. It may be exactly what you're looking for for a permanent solution for your anxiety. I look forward to any of the questions that you may have at endtheanxiety at gmail.com. For now, I wish you complete luck. Check out the other resources you have in this program, and I look forward to getting to know you a little bit better soon. Sincerely, Dennis Simsek, The Anxiety Guy. Take care.